What's up, y'all? You're watching Union Minded. I'm your host, Eric, and today we're going to go and give another view of the Local 26 contract proposal. But before I do that, I just want to address some folks that are out there spreading rumors and being nonsensical. Let me inform you a little bit more about the person that I am, because a lot of you that are out there that have never met me and only heard my name and rumors spread, you don't have a clue. I'm the guy who put forward the motion for transparency during the process of negotiations. Not for any other reason than to increase the amount of information that our membership would be able to have during the process of negotiations so that our members could be better informed to make an informed decision so that our members can choose how we move forward. Because this is not about me. This local isn't about me. This contract isn't about me. I don't know why people like to make things about me. Nothing is about me. This is a we thing. We are in a union. This is a collective thing. I'm the guy that fought for transparency so that our members could see and have all the information they needed to make a smart and wise decision. I made a video and I put it out there on, I believe it was on Monday about what was in the contract proposal. I purposefully tried to be as objective as I could be, tell you where it was good, tell you where it was short. And at the end, I told you how I planned on moving, not to influence you, but just to let you know what I was gonna do. I emphatically implored everybody who saw that video, don't do anything because I did it, read the language, think about it and choose for yourself what was best it's a very buzzy time right now it's a lot of people that aren't happy with the proposal there's a lot of folks that think it's decent enough and plenty that are undecided and in the middle but to hear rumorville churning out crap like i'm biased one way or the other is ridiculous so in conversing with folks that i know who are vehemently against this proposal, might I add. It was felt that perhaps the counterpoint or the, the, the reasons that people feel it's bad should be presented. And me being as fair as I, want, as I can be, because I always want to be as fair as possible. I asked one of my friends to send me an email Give me your argument for why you think it's bad. And they did. So in fairness, I'm going to read you what they sent me and allow for you guys to have the, 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 the information coming from the folks who think this is a terrible idea. You already got my unbiased view. You already got my, my breakdown. But I'm going to give you this one because I think it's important that we have all the information. And for crying out loud, read the proposal and make up your own dang mind. This is your union. This is our union. It belongs to all of us. And collectively, we decide how we go forward. So let's dive in. Point number one. The $100 payment for not receiving... Oh, that's embarrassing. My computer just died. Dang. Dang. Hmm. Bear with me. This shouldn't take long. Let me break out the uh, power inverter so that we can plug it in and get back to this. Bear with me. If you can cue the theme music for Jeopardy while I do this, that'd be great. You know the song I'm talking about. <laughs> Man, if you guys are hanging through this, I am impressed because I would have bounced. I ain't sticking through the technical difficulties. But the beauty is there is a fast forward button and you can always use that to get where you need to go powering up now so 
Give me a minute. I'll be right back with you. I might actually have to cut this part out, but we'll see. Come on. Come on. All right, here we go. So the email is as follows. Point number one. The $100 payment for not receiving a termination slip and paycheck. It does not specify the payment is due at time of termination. What is $100 to one of these companies? They are more often now adding the payment to the last check, which is not being delivered until the next regular payday. Point number two. The steward clause has always been at the discretion of the business manager. This may affect us if more stewards were utilized in the jurisdiction. Point number three, foreman call by name was already set at 300 hours. So a couple hundred hours will not affect this continuing to happen. Basically describing that people are still gonna jump the book and contractors will still utilize that method to be able to get folks to jump the books. Point number four, the energized work is always to be done as per NFPA. I think that there are contractors that probably skirt those requirements, but this is their, their argument, so I'm not gonna continue to counterpoint. Point number five, the workday just removed the need for 40 hours before overtime is required. Point number six, the 15 minute break states it must be taken in the immediate work area. A good majority of the jobs do not allow eating in the work area so this will not be a break if you cannot eat in the immediate work area. Point number seven. I think the progressive discipline could be a good thing if the members make them stick to it. Point number eight. Bussing, in my experience, the contractors already have been getting an employee back to their car if the need arose. This was just a way of them getting out of paying one way during the process. Number nine, unaccept unacceptable transfer will only work if the contractors are made to put in a call for specific jobs. We have had reverse layoff procedure in place for many years, yet local hands are being laid off consistently while travelers remain. This will only be beneficial if the membership holds the hall and contractors to the contract, which in the past they did not. Point number 10, the overtime in this local has been drying up for a while. Overtime is a punishment, not a privilege. The IBW has always been against a man working more than eight hours a day, five days a week. The intent is for us to make enough on 40 that we do not need overtime. If they were willing to give up the after eight, why not change the need for 40 to get a Saturday? Point number 11, there is no requirement for a JW to hold a license in this local. There should be no requirement to receive paid holidays. This is not received by all, so how is it included in our total package? All other benefits are given to all with no restrictions. We now need to maintain two licenses in this local, meaning continuing education for two and paying for two. Is there going to be a grace period for those only holding one because there is not enough time before July 4th to get another? The P Point number 12, the PTO has been at 0 .039 per hour since 12 of 22. 12, 12 of 2022. The amount accrued has not increased in this contract and will remain the same for the next three years. We already were able to accrue 100 hours. The increase from 100 to 120 will do absolutely nothing for us. It will take 3,077 hours of work to receive 120 hours of PTO. Point number 13. These contract changes are not worth the money that we left on the table for them. Most have either already been in the contract or they will only affect a limited amount of the membership. The contractors are not willingly going to give us anything. We kept hearing all through the meeting, this did not cost us anything on the total package. Everything they have left in the contract has come at a cost. In one of the early meetings concerning the contract, Tom said there was a $15.78 difference in the two proposals. With that being said, if the contractors came in at the same $6 we got on the last contract, that would put us at $21.78. They settled for $10.78, leaving $11 on the table. The language that was added came at an $11 an hour cost. I know when entering a negotiation, you never get everything, but $4.78 out of the $15.78 is a smack in the face to the membership. That's the view of the other side, all right? Now you go online, you read that proposal, 
you come to your own conclusion and you decide for yourself which way you're gonna go. My name's Eric, you're watching Union Minded. Remember that the fight's not left and right, it's up and down, it's gonna take solidarity to win always. Each one teach one, get out there and reach one. And remember that there can be no union without you and me. Front and center, peace.